Welcome to the NAFA webinar series, providing you with timely information and training each month on topics of interest. This is Brendan Burnett, Director, Professional Development and Education Programs. And uh, this month we are presenting Retirement Planning Challenges for Women in 2018-2019. According to a 2014 Gallup report, most Americans' biggest worry is running out of money during their retirement. This worry is keeping many of America's 78 million baby boomers from feeling like they can afford a happy retirement. And today, Tom Hagner will discuss the retirement risks and challenges that are especially relevant to women and will show how you can assist your clients in creating an optimal retirement plan. Tom Hagner is president of TomHagner.com and the author of the book, Paychecks and Playchecks. He is a former first vice president of New York Life, and Tom was commissioned in the U.S. Army and spent six years on active duty and another 16 years in the U.S. Army Reserve and retired as a lieutenant colonel in 2006. He is a popular industry speaker, having, having spoken at the NAFA annual meeting and career conference, the Million Dollar Roundtable, the AALU National Meeting, and the Society of Financial Service Professionals National Forum Meetings as well as numerous local association meetings. In addition to his television broadcasts on PBS, Tom has been featured in articles in the American College Wealth Channel magazine, Round the Table, an MDRT publication, National Underwriter, Business, Forbes, Money Rates, and NAFA's Advisor Today magazine. This webinar is approved for 1C credit in a number of states, and uh, including in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Those NAFA members who are in the Commonwealth of Virginia and are currently on the webinar this morning, it is required that you review the course intro statement prior to the webinar. So at this time, I would like to direct the attention of the uh, Virginia participants to the handout called Virginia Course Intro Statement. It's on the right side of your screen in your box under handout, and we're going to pause for a few moments so you can go ahead and take a look at that handout so you can get your CE credit. All right, thank you, Virginia participants, for taking a look at that document. Uh, during the presentation and question and answer session, you may type questions in the question box on the right side of your screen. Questions will be answered during the Q&A session at the end of the program. This webinar is being recorded, and uh, we'll go ahead and begin on this Veterans Day, Tom. Thank you for your service, and thank welcome you. to the webinar. Thank you, Brandon. It's great to be with you all. Uh, and I would say thank you to all my uh, fellow veterans as well who are on the call. Today, we're going to really focus on retirement and women. Uh, you know, women face uh, challenges that men don't. Uh, first of all, women live longer than men, uh, typically. Um, and many times uh, that causes all kinds of problems because uh, the longer you live, you know, longevity is not just a risk. It's a risk multiplier of all the other risks because the longer you live, the more likely the market will crash, the more likely you'll take out too much money, the more likely inflation will decimate your purchasing power, the more likely you're going to need long-term care. So that is a huge uh, risk for women. Additionally, women tend to be caregivers. I mean, they, they're the ones that typically do the most caregiving of children and of parents. And there are a lot of baby boomers right now that are in that sandwich where they're still trying to get their kids, you know, through college. And then now the now they got to take care of mom and dad and and it's and it's a real challenge because women are are forced many times to carry that burden more than men uh and then you know while younger women today are making as much or more than men uh the older generation many of them were stay-at-home moms and and so they didn't have the two incomes and and that can cause a problem and with the decline of pensions and so that's what we're really going to talk about you know I've written five books on retirement, uh, three in the U.S., two in Canada. My first book is a book by the name of Paychecks and Playchecks. And for those of you who heard me speak before, you know I never wanted to write a book. I was a reluctant author. So why to write a book? Well, 
Here's why, because if your clients right now talk to 50 different financial advisors and ask them how they should retire, they're gonna get 50 different opinions. But you know, retirement's been studied in depth by PhDs all over the world, and what the PhDs say is there's not 50 optimal ways to retire, there's really one optimal way to retire. So that's what I write about. And, and the difference between optimal retirement and best retirement is this, nobody knows what's gonna be the best. See, nobody knows what's going to be the best. If the Dow Jones is going to hit 100,000, we should all put our money in the Dow Jones. If if gold hits, you know, $50,000 an ounce, we should all put our money in, in gold. If oil goes to, you know, $600 a barrel, we should all put our money in oil. See, the thing is, nobody knows what's going to be the best. And so what math and science does when there's a bunch of different variables, they look for the optimal. And all the optimal means is which will be the best more often than anything else would be the best and it'll never be the worst. That's optimal. So I write about the optimal way to retire. I don't know what the best way to retire, but I do know what the optimal way to retire is. Now, you know, if I had to summarize paychecks and playchecks, I'd summarize it this way. What day of the week do you spend the most money? What day of the week do you go golf and you go to Home Depot, get your hair done, get your nails done? Well, for most people that day is Saturday. Well, guess what? When you retire, every day is Saturday. See, you're not just going to need to have paychecks. I would argue you're going to need to have some playchecks so you can actually enjoy your retirement. And one of the things that I do in my, you know, my regular seminars is I really focus on helping people be happy in retirement. See, most people are miserable in retirement. They are not enjoying their retirements. And I share with people why that's happening and, and some ways that they can do that. And I'm going to do that today too, because women, uh, many of the women, if they're financially okay, they can be happier in retirement than women who are worried constantly about, about their finances. So I gave the paychecks and playchecks talk down in San Diego about five years ago at a big industry meeting. And there were some there from PBS, public television. And they said, Tom, we need to take this message out to the American people because they're getting the wrong message from all, all these other talking heads. But we're not sure that they're really going to understand this paycheck and playcheck thing. We would need a simpler title. So I wrote another book. It's called Don't Worry, Retire Happy. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now, in this book, there's actually a section in there, tips for women. So I'm gonna list out these seven simple steps to retirement security, and then we're gonna focus like a laser beam on women and retirement. So here are the seven simple steps I've shared with the American people on how to retire happy and successful. This, These seven steps work for both women and men, and then we're gonna focus on just the women part, okay? So step number one, they gotta have a plan. I mean, how can you go anywhere if you don't have a roadmap or a plan of how to get there? And with this, I say you've got to work with a financial professional. Retirement is not a do-it-yourself project. Step number two, we need to help them understand and maximize their social security benefits. See, for most of your clients, social security is going to be the largest retirement asset they have. And yet people spend more time planning their summer vacation than learning how to maximize those valuable benefits. Now, this one is especially important for women, especially single women, widowed women, divorced women, because they don't have the two paychecks. They just have the one. And so for those single women, I'm going to spend some time there, but this is very important that they really consider delaying their social security benefit because they need to get the most out of that check. Step number three, we need to encourage our clients to consider a hybrid retirement. See, too many people are trying to retire too early. They haven't saved enough money. And if we can get them to work a couple extra years, we can increase their retirement significantly. In fact, I will tell you this, there have been, there's new research out that shows you could increase your savings rate from 6% to 26% a year for retirement, and that will not have the same impact as working two or three extra years. So this, again, is very important for women. They may need to work a couple extra years to en enable them to have a, a happier and more successful retirement. Step number four, we've got to help them protect their savings from inflation. Inflation is like a virus that gets worse over time. This is where stocks can fit. This is where mutual mutual funds can fit. This is where real estate can fit. You can build your clients a portfolio that if we get inflation, the portfolio goes up and there's more money to take out more money. But I want you to know they can also protect themselves against inflation without using any risk products. You need to know that I've already bought guaranteed lifetime income that will kick in when I turn age 60, but I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 65. I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 70. I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 75. I got 11 income annuities and I'll probably Probably have 25 before I shut this thing down because look, I've been studying retirement for over 30 years. And here's what I've learned about retirement. Retirement is not about the stock market. Retirement is not about the bond market. And retirement is not about real estate. Now, those products can all play a role in a successful
successful retirement. But a financially successful retirement comes down to two very simple components. We need to give our clients increasing income for the rest of their life. And component number two is risk management. We have to help them take key risks off the table. And so that's what I'm, we're going to be talking about as well. Step number five is a big one. They need to secure more retirement income. Now, these last two are very important for women because women, because they live longer, inflation is going to be a more of a risk and they need more income. You see, retirement is not about assets. I don't care how big your 401k is. I don't care how many millions of dollars you got in some brokerage account. That is not going to make you happy or even successful in retirement. It's how do you turn those assets into income? And Americans aren't very good at that. And I know I'm going to help you with that. All right. Step number six, they must have a plan for long-term care. No retirement plan is complete without a plan for long-term care. My guess is that in your book of business, this is the number one thing that has not been taken care of that can wipe out their entire life's work. This is super important for women because if women, here's what happens. You think about your average 65-year-old couple. Who gets sick first? Well, most of the time it's the man. Who takes care of the man? The wife does. Well, what happens? They use they use their money and they, they use her to take care of him. And then guess what? A lot of the money gets depleted and then the guy dies. Well, now who's going to take care of her? And that's why long-term care insurance is so important for women because they live longer. They're going to need it. Um, use your home equity wisely. For many of your clients, their house is one of the largest assets they have. I'm really not going to talk about that today, but in the book and in my uh, seminars, I give some ways they can do that. And then I wrap up with the most efficient way to pass wealth to children, grandchildren, and charities is with life insurance. See, I tell people all the time, don't leave your kids any money. Spend your money. Leave them life insurance because you can do that for pennies on the dollar. So that's what we're really going to talk about. I'm going to talk about step number one, and then we're going to jump right into the, the, the retirement for women. So step number one is they got to have a plan. The Hartford puts it this way. Those who plan for retirement are three times more likely to be confident they will have sufficient income in retirement as compared to those who have not planned. And here's why. See, the diagram on the left is the way your parents retired. The diagram on the right is the way you're going to retire. Very different pictures. If you think about it, most of your parents or grandparents worked for the same company for 30 or 40 years. When they retired, they got a pension with a guaranteed paycheck every month for the rest of their life. They got a very generous social security program where they got far more money out than what they ever put in. And if you think about it, most of your parents and grandparents didn't have to save up a lot of money. You know why? Because they didn't have to. They, they never talked about the retirement that they saved 100000 or 200000 or 500000 They always communicated their retirements in terms of income. We get $2,000 a month. We get $3,000 a month. Do you understand? Retirement has always been communicated in terms of income, not assets. But now compare that to your retirement. Many of you have little or no pension. You will get Social Security. I'm clear in all my books. Everyone on this webinar, yes, you millennials, you too, will get Social Security. I could literally fix Social Security in less than 15 minutes for the next 100 years. So Social Security is going to be a relatively easy fix. Medicare, Medicaid, healthcare, not an easy fix, okay? But your retirement is really going to depend on how much money you're able to save. But here's the problem I talked about earlier. You know, people know how to save money. They know how to invest. They know how to diversify. But what Americans are not very good at is turning their assets into income. So you don't get to retire on assets in America. What you get to retire on is income in America. And Americans aren't very good at turning their assets into income. And I know I'm going to help you with that. Now, one other thing before I move on. A lot of people think this is a knowledge business. I got news for you. This is not a knowledge business anymore. You give me an iPad, the internet, 15 minutes, I can figure out anything I need to figure out. This is now a words business. This is a language business. This is a questions business. And this is a stories business. You want to increase your production? Work on your words, work on your language, work on your questions and work on your stories. And that's what I hope you find is that I give you some powerful words, language, questions and stories to use. Now, a couple questions you want to help your clients with right out the gate. Number one, what do I need my retirement income to do? And then I would argue just as important, maybe more important, what do I want my retirement income to do? Now, what we need our retirement income to do for all of us 
is really the same. It needs to cover our basic living expenses, our housing, our food, our clothing, our cell phone, our internet. I call that the paycheck. Now what math and science demands is that paycheck should be covered with guaranteed lifetime income. So that is not where stocks fit. That is not where mutual funds fit. That is not where real estate fits. That is not where managed money fits. That's where guaranteed lifetime income fits to at least cover those basic living expenses and retirement. But then what do I want my retirement income to do? That's the play check. That's the travel. That's the cruises. That's the fun stuff. And all those other products fit fine right there. But you want to know what? If the truth were told, many of your clients are not fully enjoying their retirements. And you've all got clients like this. They're in their 60s. They're in their 70s. They got plenty of money. Many of them don't even touch it. You know, when I was an advisor, I used to bust my clients. I'd say, wait a minute now. You told me when you retired, you're going to join the country club. You're going to buy a new boat. You're going to go on a cruise and you're going to see the world. Have you done that yet? You know, many of your clients will say, no, we haven't done that yet. You know why? Because just in case interest rates are so low, you know, the market's been so volatile. Bitcoin crashed. They're living what I call a just in case retirement. And here's what it looks like. They don't touch their money and they don't touch their money and they don't touch their money and they don't touch their money. Then they die. What happens to money? Go to the kids. What do the kids do with it? They join the country club. They buy a new boat. They go on a cruise and they see the world. Look, this is happening all over the country. And what I want to make clear is this. I want you and your clients to join the country club. I want you and your clients to see the world. I do not want you and your clients to live a just-in-case retirement. All right. Let's get right into tips for women because there's an entire chapter in my book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, that's titled tips for women. And one of the stories I talked about was this story where this, this lady got her first job at age 66. And this was a story by Dr. David Babel. He's a professor at Wharton. I read a lot of his stuff. And if you want to read stuff on guaranteed income, you want to look up Dr. David Babel. He's a brilliant guy in this area. But he was telling a story about a couple where the husband had been like a professor for many years, very regarded professor, made good money. The, mo the, the wife was a stay-at-home mom. And then they got to retirement. And instead of a pension, he, he took the lump sum offer. And then their nephew uh, said, hey, I'm in financial services. I'll take care of your money. Well, one thing led to another. And that nephew lost all their money. And then he got sick and he died. So there she is in retirement, age 66, with nothing. She had to get her first job. And it, it, it talked about how this just devastated the family. And he talks about, and you can Google this report, Lifetime Income for Women, a Financial Economist's Perspective. Uh, but he said there's five reasons why women face risks men don't. Number one, the decreasing rates of return on their Social Security contributions. As you know, you know, Social Security, you haven't had much for raises. If you actually calculated the internal rate of return, and especially for women, it's very low. And so it's probably not going to be enough. Social Security is not going to be enough for them. And then the accelerated demise of defined benefit pension plans. There are very few pension plans left anymore. And the thing about pension plans is for most pension plans, it didn't just cover the husband. It also covered the wife, regardless of whether she worked at all, whether she got 100% or 75% or 50%, there was normally some benefit for the wife. Now that's disappeared as well. The transition of the baby boom generation into retirement, creating a cash drain on our social security system. Well, you've seen that by about 2034, that all the social security trust fund money will be will be uh, depleted. And then they're going to have to do something. They're either going to have to raise retirement age or raise taxes or a combination of both. I think it'll be a combination. But otherwise, you know, social security will drop to 79 percent of what it is right now. Longer life longer expected lifetimes and then step five you know the much smaller post baby boom generations and i know there'll be people say oh the millennials are bigger you know generation z is bigger yeah maybe but you want to know what it's a different generation because you look at many of the millennials they're coming out of college with a hundred two hundred thousand dollars of debt and this is gonna this is gonna be, have a huge impact there's in fact there's more college debt now than there is credit card debt. Just try to fathom that for a minute. And so they're carrying that on their backs. So whether there's more of them or less of them, they're not going to be the same as the baby boomers who went into the work environment with no debt. And so all of these are going to have impacts. 
single women. There are more than 25 million single women. A lot of them want to be single. Some are divorced, some are death of a spouse. There can be lots of reasons why uh, women are single, but they have to live off of their own savings. There's no two people contributing to the plan. And if 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 their social security benefit isn't high enough, if they haven't saved enough for retirement, they're going to be in big trouble. And women of retirement age are twice as likely as men to live in poverty. And so if you look at who's in poverty in America, single women, senior women are, are, are uh, a large number there. Single women are highly likely to become caregivers. I talked about that, not just for their children, but for their parents. And this takes time away from the workforce. And the, the second paragraph there says that, you know, because they're caregiving, they're they're not earning the same amount of money that, could, that they could be making. They're not paying in the same Social Security that they could be paying. They're not saving as much money as they could be saving because they're spending their time doing caregiving instead of doing something that's going to earn them money. And that, that this can be, on average, $325,000 per woman. And with this in mind, single women really need long-term care for their parents, but also for themselves. You know, and people say, oh, I don't want, uh, you know, somebody else taking care of me. I want to take care of my parents. That's fine. You can want to take care of your parents all that you want. But don't you want to have a little financial assistance taking care of your parents? And that's why it's so important that the parents have long term care insurance and that a single woman has long term care insurance because nobody else is going to take care of them. Then divorced women, 11 percent of the women are, are divorced and they face many of the same challenges that other women do. They live longer and they tend to need more long-term care because they live longer. Now, here's a key thing that we can help divorce women. Many of them don't know that as long as they were married at least 10 years, they can they can take a spousal benefit on their ex-spouse's work record, all right? And the ex-spouse doesn't even have to claim social security. They just have to be eligible for social security and they can they can they can they can claim the spousal benefit. So, a lot of women aren't aware of that. That's something that you can really help them with. Women business owners. You, you know, women business owners are growing rapidly. Over 10 million businesses in the United States now are, are owned by women. But you know what? They can become disabled. They can uh, have all kinds of other uh, challenges. They've got to save for their retirement. And uh, only about two-thirds of women business owners have even estimated how much they're going to need in retirement, much less started to save. So, I think there's a tremendous opportunity to go out and, and help women business owners because guess what? They've got money. They've got capital. They can do things. They're just not sure of what they should do. And that's where they can use your advice and your help. Show them what a permanent life insurance policy can do. Show them what a diversified portfolio can do. Show them that retirement's not just about assets. It's about income and that you're going to be happier and more successful in retirement if you've got income. And now there's products like, you know, DIA's deferred income annuities. That's what I've used. I've bought all these deferred income annuities that are going to kick in in the future because, look, I'm going to do a shout out here to Curtis Cloak. He's another speaker that, that many of you have seen at NAFA. Um, he runs this thing called Thrive University. I've been through it several times. And one of the things that really struck me is Curtis showed that a normal DIA, deferred income annuity, will outperform a 60-40 stock and bond portfolio over like 30 years with no risk. So why am I going to risk my money in a 60-40 portfolio when I can buy a DIA that's going to outperform it after fees, after taxes, after expenses? So that is something that if we could show women business owners that, hey, you can, why don't you buy a thousand dollars a month of income starting at age 60 or 65 and then the next year, hey, let's get another thousand dollars a month and the next year, let's get another thousand dollars a month. What if you got to age 65 and you had five or ten thousand dollars of guaranteed income coming in? I'll bet you'd feel a little more secure in your retirement. So we have products that can help these women uh, be secure and, and, and live great retirements. Widows, women typically out, outlive men. Look at this. 85% of women over the age of 85 are widows. Isn't that an unbelievable number? And, you know, many couples fail to realize that when, when one, one of them dies, there's going to be a substantial decline in lifestyle. You know, I just, I'm doing a meeting here uh, in Atlanta. We've got uh, about a room full of people right next door and we're doing our 70 life apps in 70 days. And, and we're showing these advisors how to write 70 life apps in 70 days. And I, I, I gave an idea this morning about protecting social security benefits and I'll do it in this meeting, but we can help them protect against this decline in lifestyle by using life insurance before they become widows, all right? And 
Older women are much more apt to have a longer period requiring assistance at long to, for long-term care. So th again, very important that widowed women uh, have a long-term care plan. And then you've got this impact on low rates, uh, uh, low interest rates on life insurance. You know, I always tell people in a 1% interest rate environment, and for many years we were in a 1% interest rate environment, do you know how much life insurance you would need to protect 50,000 of income in a 1% interest rate environment? You need $5 million worth of life insurance. Now, how many people do you know that are walking around making 50,000 a year that are carrying $5 million on life life insurance. And well, people say, well, Tom, that's crazy. Okay. Even in a 5% interest rate environment, remember right now we're in about a two or two and a half percent, even in a 5% interest rate environment, it takes $1 million of life insurance to cover every 50,000 of income. You know, let me tell you a true story. And, and this is a true story. When I was writing, this was my second book, Retirement Income Master Secrets of the Pros. When I was writing the conclusion to this book, this story happened. So it's in the conclusion of this book. Um, I had been gone. Uh, on, on, on road trips, training people uh, for 13 out of 14 days. Okay, 13 out of 14 days I was on the road. So I was exhausted. I had one day in between these two trips. I was gone all week. Um, then I then I went on another trip and then I then I had one day off and I went on another trip and, and I had one day a Saturday off. And a couple of days before I got home, my oldest son, Ryan, gave me a call. He said, Dad, I need a favor. My best friend's brother died uh, three weeks ago and his wife, the widow, just got the check and it's a big check and she wants to meet with you on Saturday. I said, Ryan, why does she want to meet with me for? I mean, I, I don't do any more personal production. I'm just a speaker author. He said, well, that's why she wants to meet with you because she knows you know this stuff and you're not going to try to sell her anything. I said, Ryan, I've been gone for 13 days. I'm leaving, you know, tomorrow or Sunday for seven more days. I'm not taking my one day off driving around the valley looking for some woman who wants to talk to me. But I said, here's what I'll do. If they want to come to my house, I'll meet with them at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Well, guess what? The widow, the dad and the brother show up at my house. She was in her 40s, two little girls, husband killed unexpectedly in an accident, a one million dollar death claim. After I gave her my condolences, she, she said these words to me. She said, Tom, I never thought I'd be a millionaire. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to build a custom house on a lake with a place for my daughters to play. I don't want a cookie cutter house. I want a custom house on a lake, place for my daughters to play. I literally had to stop her mid-sentence, ma'am. Time out. We're not talking any custom houses today. Do you realize you only have $1 million in a 1% interest rate environment? That's $10,000 a year. I am here to see how you and your daughters can possibly survive on $10,000 a year. Now, maybe maybe you could get 20,000, maybe 30,000, maybe 35,000, 38,000, but every expert I know says you can't take out 4%. 4% is going to fail, especially this had to last her for 40 or 50 years. So I said, Max, and this is pushing it. You are a $38,000 a year woman. You're not a millionaire. There's no custom houses I'm aware of at $38,000. She was shocked. What are you talking about? My husband made $250,000. We can't live on $38,000 a year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how much life insurance should somebody have this making $250,000 a year? $5 million. We could have had a different conversation. See, you should be carrying no less than $1 million of life insurance for every 50000 of income. And when people say, well, that sounds a little high to me, you tell them the story of the widow in Arizona who thought she was a millionaire, who is now stuck living a $38,000 a year life with her two little girls. I'm telling you, your clients are so far underinsured, they have no idea. Just use the rule of thumb, $1 million of life insurance for every 50000 of income. Now, I wrote an article for um, uh, for the American College uh, some years ago. They had a they had a magazine, and they said this was right when the market crashed the last time. And they said, Tom, we need you to write an article on why people buy life insurance in terrible markets like these. So I wrote an article, and one of the things I said is life insurance is a women's issue. Life insurance is not a man's issue. Life insurance is a women's issue. Now, what am I talking about? Well, seven out of ten baby boomers are going to outlive their husbands, okay? And because they live longer, they tend to marry men older than themselves. They can look forward to widowhood of 15, 20, 25 years. So here's the deal. Women, you are going to live with the consequences, good or bad, of how much life insurance is on your spouse. Now, am I saying it's not important for women to have life insurance? No, I'm not saying that at all. Women are way underinsured too. In fact, 50% of all women own zero life insurance. So women need a lot more life insurance. What I'm saying is 70% of the time, women are the beneficiaries of the life insurance policy. And so we've got to take this out to women to say, 
What's going to happen? If something happened to him, what's going to happen to you? And for, for um, non-traditional couples, I have a chapter in the book on tips for non-traditional couples as well, because the non-traditional couples face issues that, 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 that men don't face too. So anyway, that's, that's in the book as well. And I say this, if every wife knew what every widow knows, there'd be a lot more life insurance in those houses. So that's a power phrase. You might want to write that down. If every wife knew what every widow knows, there'd be a lot more life insurance in the home. Okay, one of the key steps in my books is to secure more guaranteed lifetime income. I told you, income, retirement's all about income. It's not about assets. Time Magazine puts it this way. Securing at least a base level of lifetime income should be every retiree's priority, at least if they want to live happily ever after. And I, and I tell people, this lines up exactly with what the PhDs who study retirement say, that as a minimum, your clients should be covering their basic living expenses in retirement with guaranteed lifetime income. Now, there are three sources of guaranteed lifetime income. The first source is Social Security, where I, I talked a little bit about Social Security. But let me ask you a question. What is Social Security? Social Security is a lifetime income annuity. It's a guaranteed paycheck for life. The, the second source is a pension. But let me ask you a question. What is a pension? A pension is a lifetime income annuity. It's a guaranteed paycheck for life. And what the PhDs who study retirement say is you should be covering your basic living expenses in retirement with guaranteed lifetime income. So social security counts, pension counts, but whatever you're short, you know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to go find an insurance company and buy a lifetime income annuity. Now, look, I speak all over the world, so I know when, when what you get when you're on appointments. I get it at my seminars. I get people to raise their hand and say, Tom, we don't like annuities around here. Susie Orman doesn't like annuities. Dave Ramsey doesn't like annuities. Ken Fisher takes out full page ads. I hate annuities and so should you. We don't like annuities around here. If you've ever had a client say that to you, what I'd encourage you to do is do what I do. You know what I do? I just act surprised. Like, seriously? You don't like annuities? Really? So let me understand what you're just saying. You paid into Social Security for 35 years, but you're telling me you're going to call up the Social Security Administration and say, stop those checks. No more nasty Social Security checks allowed in this house. We don't like annuities. Are you seriously going to do that? You worked for that company for 42 years, but you're telling me you're going to call up the HR department and say, stop those pension checks. I don't want to find another one of those nasty buggers in the mailbox. We don't like annuities in this house. Well, typically the people will say something like this. Well, I guess we like those annuities. It's just those insurance company annuities we don't like. I say, really? And why is that? Oh, because they're all loaded up with fees and everything. Really? Does anybody in this call know what the what the total out the door costs on a lifetime income annuity? I'm talking SPIA or DIA right now are zero. It's not even a fee product. It's called a spread product. If you're guaranteed a thousand dollars a month for the rest of your life, guess how much you'll hit your bank account every month for the rest a thousand bucks a month. Now I've had people say, Tom, that's not exactly true. I read the policy. There's a one-time $300 policy fee in there. Yep. That's already in the thousand bucks a month. There are zero ongoing fees in a lifetime income annuity. Zero. Now, there are annuities that do have fees. Variable annuities have fees. Some income riders on indexed annuities have fees. That doesn't mean they're bad. It means you have to weigh out what is the fee versus what is the guarantee. Remember, the reason they have fees is they got guarantees that stocks and bonds and mutual funds don't have. You see, it's not about the fees. Yeah, I, I tell people this all the time. It's not about the fees. I mean, if I could retire on low fees, I guess fees would matter. But you know what? I don't get to retire on low fees. You know what I get to retire on? Where can I make the most, lose the least after fees? That's called risk-adjusted net return. I'm looking looking for the highest risk adjusted net return, not the lowest fees. But I don't want to get off the subject. I want everyone on this webinar to know that you can buy and sell guaranteed lifetime income that's not even in a fee product. And if you have a client that just focus on fees, 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 why are you trying to sell them a fee product? Sell them a product that doesn't even have fees. Sell them a SPRD. Yeah. Here's an idea for you. You know, when I was a when I was an agent, um, I had a lot of widows. I don't know why, but I, I worked the senior market and I had a lot of widows. And I would have widows that would have money in CDs. This is back when CDs were paying, you know, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7 percent, you know, CDs. And they, they just they just wanted to keep it in the bank. It was FDIC insured and they they could earn six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent. They liked it. So they bought CDs. Well, what I found is that many of these widows weren't even taking the interest. I couldn't even, could never talk to, talk to them about touching their principal. They wouldn't even take the interest. And I said, look, and this is a power phrase for you. I tell people this all the time, the two things. Number one, you're not getting any younger. Number two, you don't get to take any of it with you. 
Think about it. You're not getting any younger. You don't get to take any of it with you. So what I would do for them is I say, here's what we're going to do. And that's a power phrase too. Instead of saying, what do you think? Say, here's what we're going to do. And let's say they have two children and let's say she has $200,000. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hundred. Well, I, hopefully she has more than 200,000 because you got to leave them some liquidity. So let's say she has $300,000 with two children. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave 100,000 liquid. I'm going to put 100,000 with the widow and the son and 100,000 widow and the daughter, joint life. Now mom gets two checks for the rest of her life. When she dies, each of her kids get a check for the rest of their lives. And I said, this is perfect because see what happens is a lot of times they leave money to their kids and then it ruins their kids and then they blow it and they, they, you know, the, a lot of kids are not good with money. And I tell people all the time, the one thing you don't want to do, if you have a kid who's not good with money, you don't want to leave money. You want to leave them guaranteed income. And so the widows loved it because now they could spend that money. And now in my new uh, presentations, I'm talking about the psychonomics of retirement, not just the economics, the psychonomics. I'll just give you a flavor for it. You got something from your company every two weeks, your entire working career, and you were sure happy when it came in. What was that thing called? A paycheck. And what do you do with most, not all, but most of your paycheck, what do you do when it came in? You spent it. You paid for your house, paid for your car. You went on trips. You bought stuff. You got and spent a paycheck every two weeks, your entire working career, and you never had a problem with that. Hey, when was the last time you rated your 401k? When was the last time you took 200 grand out of your bank account or your brokerage account? Oh, we can't do that. We got to save it. We got to grow it. We got to protect it. We can't touch it. We got to save it. We got to grow it. We got to protect it. We can't touch it. Okay, you do that for 45 years. You think you're waking up on your 65th birthday saying, by golly, I'm going to blow my 401k today. So you can't do it. People can't spend their assets. Most, they've been psychonomically programmed not to touch those assets. And many of your clients are going to go to their graves, never touching their assets, which is why the PhDs who study retirement say you should turn some of that into guaranteed lifetime income. And I'm telling you, the widows love joint life with their kids. They love that. Now, in all my meetings, I talk about the math and science and, and math is important to me and science is important to me because I teach people how to retire. Better be right. I'm on PBS and 72 million homes. Golly, I sure hope it's correct. But you want to know what? For your clients, there's something way more important than, than math and science. I call it the happy factor. So when you think about it, do you think your clients, when they retire, do they want to be happy or unhappy? I'll bet they want to be happy. Well, guess what? The Wall Street Journal discovered the secret to a happy retirement. The secret to a happy retirement is friends, neighbors, and a fixed annuity. And the Wall Street Journal found that the people who were the happiest in retirement were surrounded by their friends, surrounded by their families, and they had guaranteed paychecks every single month. In fact, let me ask you a question. Who are your happiest friends in retirement? I'll bet it's your retired military, retired government government, retired teacher, retired union. Oh, it's people with pensions. See, study after study after study has shown people with pensions are much happier in retirement than people who don't have pensions. Do you understand? Happiness in retirement is tied to almost 100% to guaranteed lifetime income, not assets. Who are the most miserable friends you got? They're loaded. They got assets out the wazoo, but they're losing money in GE. They're losing money in Facebook. Now they're losing money in Amazon. They're losing money in Bitcoin. These people are miserable. Assets make people miserable in retirement. See, what makes people happy is guaranteed lifetime income. Look, if you still don't believe me, look what Time Magazine found in Great Britain. Lifetime income stream, key to retirement happiness. A new study in the land of grumps reveals that retirees with a guaranteed lifetime income stream can find true happiness. And if you still don't believe me, when we, this call ends, I want you to Google Towers Watson. They're not even in the insurance industry. Google Towers Watson and annuities and retirement and happiness. They wrote a whole white paper. They downloaded, they, they, you can download it for free. They studied all retirees, old retirees, young retirees, rich retirees, poor retirees. You know what they found? All retirees were happier if they had guaranteed lifetime income. So look, I cannot stress enough how important it is for you personally, but also for all your clients to have guaranteed lifetime income. Number one, for the ultimate success of their retirement. Number two, if they want to be happy in retirement. And number three, I'll give you a bonus if they want to live longer.
Look, some of you follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn, and if you don't, I'd encourage you to do it. I post a lot of neat stuff on retirement. I recently posted a free economics study. It's actually a University of Chicago study. Free economics picked up on it, pushed it out through social media. It was a University of Chicago study that studied people who bought lifetime income annuities versus people who didn't. You know what they found? The group that bought the income annuities lived longer than the group that didn't. Here's what they found. Research shows that people who buy annuities tend to live longer, and not just because they're kind of the kind of people that have the money to buy annuities annuities to start with. It's apparently that little extra incentive of the annuity payout that keeps people going. You know, in the, in the introduction, they told you I was a senior executive officer of a Fortune 100 life insurance company. And that's true. And when I was there, I asked our actuaries, I said, hey, tell me what our actual life experience is between our annuity book of business and our life insurance book of business. Guess what? It wasn't even close. The annuity book of business lived a lot longer than the life insurance book of business. Um, if, if you're a CLU or CHFC, you get the Journal for Financial Service Professionals. I would encourage you to look up the July issue. One of the best articles I've ever read, Annuities and Moral Hazard, Can Longevity Insurance Increase Longevity? It was written by an attorney, not even by an agent or anything. And here's a direct quote. In the United States, a 65-year-old male who purchases a life annuity can expect to live about 20% longer than a 65-year-old male who does not. And explained, and this isn't just about men, this explained how everybody who has guaranteed income tends to to live longer. You know why? They, they don't have as much stress. They're not worried. The market crashes, they go play another 18 holes of golf. Oh, and you know what? If, if they're getting paid to live and they got a little pain, guess what? They actually go see the doctor. They watch what they eat. They exercise. Look, none of this is anything new. Many of you had to read a book in high school or college. It was called Sense and Sensibilities, written by Jane Austen in 1811. Does anybody happen to remember what Jane Austen wrote about annuities back in 1811? Well, let me refresh your memory from chapter two. If you observe, people always live forever when there's an annuity to be paid to them. The annuity is a very serious business. It comes over and over every year, and there is no getting rid of it. She wrote that in 1811. Now, we want to pass this happy factor on to children, grandchildren, and charities. Look, I always tell people, don't give your children any money. Leave them life insurance. Don't give your grandchildren any money either. And let me show you why. We met with Annie. Annie said, Tom, I've got six grandchildren. I got $100,000 down in the bank. It's not doing much. I don't care. I don't need this money. This is my just-in-case money. Uh, I named my six grandchildren as beneficiary. And when I die, they each get a little over $16,000. Well, that's a nice grandma. But if that's her just-in-case money, why did she put it in the bank? Bank. Why didn't she put in a life insurance policy? She can still get money out of it if she needs it. But look, when she dies, each grandchild gets $36,000, not $16,000. Don't leave your grandchildren money. Leave them life insurance. Now, what about insuring a non-working spouse, like a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad? There are people say, well, you know, she's not making any money. He's not making any money. I don't think we should have any insurance. No, that's not the point. The point is, what is the value they are bringing to the house? Do you know, look, I'm a, I'm a working dad. My wife has almost always been a stay-at-home mom. I can't do what I do without her. If something ever happened to her, I'd be screwed. That's it. I'd have to shut it down. She does everything at the house. I don't. I'm gone all the time. And so what's the value of that? That's why I carry a lot of life insurance on her because if something happened to her, I'd be in big trouble, okay? And so you've got to look at what does the value of that non-working spouse bring to the family and they should definitely have insurance on them. What about insuring children and grandchildren? I get a lot of people say, oh, that's disgusting. I don't want to benefit from the, from the loss of my child. That's not why you buy life insurance on children and grandchildren. Look, in, in Paychecks and Playchecks, I tell about my boy, JJ, when he was eight, he had a brain tumor the size of a tennis ball taken out of the back of his brain. Now, eight-year-old boys aren't supposed to have brain tumors taken out of their head, but he did. And guess what? He was uninsurable for quite a while, but it didn't matter because I always bought my kids' life insurance right when they were born. As big a policy as a company would issue, I bought it to, to, lock, to lock in their insurability. You know, uh, he's not the only child that's had medical problems. I promise you there are other children that do as well. And the other thing is, what would, how would you react if something did happen to your child? Oh, you think you're going to go back to work the next day? Oh, everything's fine. No, it's not fine. And guess what? This can take years, years for people to get over a death of a child or a grandchild. So there's lots of reasons. And this is a perfect time to talk during the holidays. You're going to get a lot of people. Oh, talk to me after the first year. Talk to me after the first year. No, I got the best Christmas present idea for your Hanukkah gift for you. You know, instead of buying your, your grandkid that toy that broke 
two days after you gave it to them or ran out of batteries. Let me show you this life insurance policy. You buy a 10 pay whole life or something like that. And you show them what this can do for that kid. You can give that child a million dollars by the time they're age 65. That's way better than any toy. And this is the kind of stuff you can talk about during the holidays when you wouldn't normally get these appointments. What about charitable giving? Here, uh, Alan Helen, the very charitably minded, uh, they tied to their church, they give to their university. They saved up 50000 they want to give to charity. But when they started talking about it, they each want to give 50000 Well, how do you give 100000 to charity if all you saved up was 50000 You put the 50000 in a life insurance policy, it immediately creates $100,000 or more of gifting power. You want to leave more money to charity? Don't leave them money, leave them life insurance. What about protecting social security benefits? I talked about this. Here, the husband gets 2,000 a month, the wife gets 1,000 a month. What happens when he dies? Well, she gets his. What happens to hers? It's gone. So her income goes down. What happens to her taxes? It, it goes up. She has to file, she has to file a, a single instead of joint. What could have protected them? Life insurance could have protected them. So look, you know, I hope this was helpful for you. My question to you is, what are you going to do with it? Because if you don't do something with this, it's not going to do anything for you. So let me give you a couple ideas. Number one, I would encourage you to visit my website and sign up for my newsletter. It is free. Just so you know, the American College named me as one of the 11 people in the world you should be following for retirement income. Let me share with you my most popular newsletter. Why Ken Fisher really loves annuities, and you should too. I'm not going to go over it. you got to Google it, but you can find it out there. So when somebody says Ken Fisher hates annuities, no, I wrote an article that he really loves them. He's getting rich off of them. My, my second most popular one was this. The 60-40 portfolio is dead. Long Long live life insurance and annuities. Again, I'm going to make you look it up and read it, but Forbes magazine called me the next day after that came out and said, can we put this in Forbes magazine? I said, yes, you can. And this shows why life insurance and annuities can be incredible bond substitutes, not, not stock substitutes, bond substitutes. And if you just got people to move their bond portfolio to you, they're going to have better performance and they're never going to run out of money. They're going to be happier. They're going to live longer. There's so many reasons why they should do it. If you go to my website, I got all kinds of products. I got books. I got audiobooks. I got DVDs. I got slide decks. You like my slides? I got slide decks. Look, I've spent my entire career putting this together so it makes sense to normal people. I take all the PhD stuff and put it into real language. But you know what? You have to go over this over and over. You can't just you know, attend a 45-minute seminar and, and think it's going to change. You're not going to get the words, language, questions, and stories in 45 minutes. Why does the Army have me take apart and put together my weapon 4,000 times? I think I figured it out after six times. But you know what? After 4,000 times, you know it down here. After six times, you only know it up here. Well, how do you do that? Through repetition. you got to turn your drive time into learning time, your traffic time into learning time, your workout time into learning time, which is why all those audiobooks also come with an MP3 disc. My books are customizable. You can put your name and picture, and it'll still say that it's by me, but then it says contributions from your name, and you get the whole back cover and one of the inside sleeves. This is what top producing advisors are doing. They're doing it with both paychecks and playchecks, and don't worry, retire happy. You can do that. This is the DVD of my TV special, Don't Worry, Retire Happy. They put it in a bucket of popcorn with two Cokes and a candy. They let me make the presentation. Then the people come in, and they buy life insurance, annuities, long-term care, and then they say, who else should watch this? Oh, my neighbor, my buddy, my my, my, my aunt's retiring in two months. They get referrals and then they make buckets of popcorn for them. I've got online training and coaching. I don't have time to go over, but I, it does three things. Number one, it trains you. Over 10 hours of my brain are online. Everything I've ever presented is online in video format, three to three to five minute clips. What if you spent 10 minutes a day with me for the next three months? Do you think you'd be any better? What about coaching? So it, it's all the training, everything I've ever done, life insurance, annuities, long-term care, social security, uh, combination ideas, sales ideas. Then there's coaching. You get to an appointment. There's a... you. you you go to client coach on your phone and, and a video me pops up. I say, tell me about this appointment. Is your client single or married? You click single. How old is this person? 72. Once you hit those two buttons, a video me pops up. Okay. So you're meeting with a seven year old widow. Here's going to be her key concerns. Here's the products you're probably going to use. Here's the questions you should ask. Here's going to be her objections. Here's how to handle those objections. And I coach you before you go on the appointment. The next day you're going on an appointment with a married couple in their forties. You had 45 married. A video me pops up and I coach you very differently. This is state of the art. Nobody else has this. And then client education. 
Who's educating your clients? Susie Harmon, Dave Ramsey, Ken Fisher, or would you rather have me educate them? And for the TV special, I had to put together Retire Happy You. And normally for all this training, coaching, client stuff, it's it's normally $97 a month. But because this is an AFA sponsored event, here's the deal. If you want, you can text HAPPY to 773-770-4377. Let me tell you what you're going to get. You're going to get all three of my books, all three of my audio books, the DVD, the Social Security Guide, which is updated with all the Medicare stuff that's normally over three hundred dollars on my website, hundred fifty dollars. But I'm also going to pay for the first month of that ninety seven dollars a month. There's no obligation. You can quit whenever you want. I hope you don't. I hope you keep it for at least a few months because I can definitely take you to that next level. I'm also going to give you four cash cows. I didn't have time to do the cash cow story, but you can just Google Tom Hegna cash cows. You can watch the the YouTube video if you want. So again, just text happy to that number if you want it. So let me wrap it up this way. I can't tell you if the market's going to go up or if the market's going to go down. I don't know. Are we going to have inflation? We're going to have deflation. I don't know, but I do know this. If you have a plan, if you work a little longer, save a little more. If you cover your basic living expenses with guaranteed income and optimize the rest of your portfolio to protect yourself against inflation. If you maximize your social security benefit, have a plan for long-term care, use your home equity wisely and use life insurance as the most efficient way to pass your wealth to your children, grandchildren, and charities. I do know this. Each and every one of you and your clients can have a happy and successful retirement that's based in math and science not based on some stockbroker's opinion. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions, Brendan, if there are any questions out there. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we do have some questions, and we'll pause for a moment to let a few more questions come in. And as a reminder, you can type your questions on the question box on the right side of your screen. Shari says she loves the... Uh, the cash cows video. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a powerful video on how to sell life insurance to wealthy people. Brendan, while the questions are coming, I'll give you some of the most common ones I hear. You know, what age should somebody buy a, an annuity or buy, you know, life insurance? Look, with an annuity, any money that you're saving for your retirement, that's 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 fine. I don't care what age. Just remember, the annuity is not there for saving for college education or down payment on a home. It's for retirement. So it should be retirement dollars that go into an annuity. For life insurance, you want to get that as young as you can because you can't buy it, you gotta qualify for it. You qualify for it with your health, just like long-term care. Don't wait till you're 60 to buy long-term care insurance. Buy it in your 30s and 40s if you can, because you can't buy it. You have to qualify for those things. So you wanna make sure that you're, that you're getting it uh, when you're young and healthy. People say, I don't need it. Well, guess what? That's the only time you can buy any insurance. Think about it. You know, think about all those homes that burn in California. You think they could call up their state farm agent and say, hey, my house is on fire. Can I buy some homeowner's insurance? You can't buy it when you need it. You got to buy it before you need it. What about an auto policy? You get in a four car pileup. You think you're going to call country financial? Say, hey, you know, can you cover my car? No, they can't. You got to buy it before you need it. Same with life insurance. Same with long term care. That's the only time you can buy any insurance is when you don't need it. People say, I can't afford it. No, you can't afford not to. What's going to happen to your family if something happened to you? You know, the premium on this policy is not the problem. The premium is the solution to the problem. The problem is if something happened to you, your, your whole family screwed right now because what are you going to do? That's the problem. This, this insurance is the solution to the problem. It's not the problem. And then people have their priorities all screwed up. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a whole life insurance thing over here in Atlanta. And I said, you know, when I was an agent, I'd drive up to a house. They'd have two pickups, a car, an RV, a jet ski, a boat. Uh, but they didn't have 25 bucks a month to put into insurance. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. We got our priorities backwards. See, the way you get wealthy in America is by paying yourself first. See, what most Americans do, they pay themselves last. They pay for their car. They pay for their house. They pay for all these other things. And then they're standing at the back of the line and there's nothing left. That's not how you get wealthy. The way you get wealthy is to pay yourself first. That's why we need to put 250 bucks a month in this 10 pay a whole life, but we got to pay yourself first. And then you need to put your money into appreciating assets, not depreciating assets. Think about it. Your car depreciates, your boat depreciates, your jet ski depreciates, your iPhone depreciates, your clothes, your shoes, your boots, your whatever you spend your money on, it all depreciates. You don't get wealthy putting your money into depreciating assets. You get wealthy by putting your money into appreciating assets. These are just simple concepts that I'm telling you 99% of Americans don't sit around and think about. 
And we have a question from Janet uh, okay. regarding Social Security. Uh, can a 63-year-old divorced woman, married over 10 years, take the ex of Social Security, and then when she turns 70, switch over to receiving her Social Security as she made more during the marriage and is waiting till 70 to receive hers? That would or be a great strategy. His, is she barred from switching to hers? No, she can she can take his and then switch to hers. That's a great strategy. And we have a question from Spike. What is the best way to get started prospecting in the senior retirement market? All right. Um, let me tell you how I did it. And I was different, you know, back then. Uh, and then I'll tell you how I think you ought to do it. The way I did it was I was mailing, I was, I was an agent in Tempe, Arizona. And so we'd buy these new home leads and I'd mail out, mail out, I'd mailed hundreds of things every week, bulk mail, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds to new home buyers. Well, it turns out a bunch of home buyers that came down to Arizona are seniors. So I just by working the new home market, I got into the senior market. Well, when I got into the senior market, I found what at the time, what really was, irritating to people is that they that they had to pay tax on their social security benefits so i really studied about the taxes on social security benefits and i found out some things number one a lot of people had cds back then because cds were paying 10 and 12 percent and all that interest counted towards the taxation of their social security benefits but i also learned that all tax-free bond interest counts towards the taxation of the social security benefits so i found a bunch of seniors that have money in cds and tax-free bonds and i said what are you what are you what are you doing this for and, and they said well it's tax-free and i said no it's not no one you start taking social security every penny of tax-free bond interest counts towards the taxation of their social security benefits so by moving some of their money out of cds into an annuity by moving some of their money out of tax-free bonds into annuities i I got some of them down from paying tax on 85% of their social security benefits down to zero. Well, let me tell you, if you take somebody from 85% down to zero, they talk about that. And, and these seniors, they hang out and they play cards and they do stuff and they talk. And all of a sudden they started getting referral, 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 referral. And I got it down to where I could tell in less than 15 minutes, if I could help somebody reduce or eliminate the tax on their social security benefits. So that's what I did. Okay. Now, what would I do today? I would go out and I would, build my social media circle as big as I could with seniors. I'd, I'd start hanging out where seniors hang out. I would volunteer at places where seniors hang out. I might try to do some stuff at these senior uh, retirement villages and, and see if there's things that you could be doing. Yeah, it's it's going to be out of your comfort zone. Yeah, you don't normally hang out with 60 and 70 year old people, but if you want to get in that market, you're better. And so, and then if I got connected with so many people, then the key on social media is you got to watch it. Oh, somebody's getting married. Somebody get divorced. Somebody just died. Somebody had a baby. These are all life events that back in the day, I never had access to that. We had to buy baby leads. We had to buy new home leads. We had to buy these leads. Now, if you got, you know, five, 10,000 people in your funnel, you, every day you got seven people, 10 people that are having life events. You got your calendar full. And so I just think people aren't using their social media well enough, like build that funnel as big as you can and then watch it too. Don't just, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of posting because that's what I do. I try to do posts that then you can share and everything. But, but if I was selling to people, I'd be watching who had a baby, who got divorced, who got married, who got a new house. You know, I would be looking at all these life events that are valuable because that's the time when people buy stuff. And Joseph would like to know, what is your opinion on Roth annuities versus deferred income annuities? Well, you can have a deferred income Roth annuity, so I like them, you know. I mean, I've, I've – and I'll tell you this. If there's anybody out there who has not converted their 401ks and IRAs as much as you can to Roth, uh, I don't know what you're waiting for because I can tell you this. These are the lowest tax rates you will ever see in your entire life, okay? And that's back by math and science, too. We are $21 trillion in debt, climbing at 2 or $3 billion every day. We have $150 to $200 trillion of unfunded obligations for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. So I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's math. We need a math party. We need a party that can freaking add and subtract because I'm telling you what, taxes have to go up from here. They're not going down. So... You know, you can pay your taxes now. You can pay them later. If you pay them later, it's going to be a lot more. So I'd be converting everything I could into Roth. Whether you want to use an annuity is fine. I mean, I think you should convert at least some of it into an annuity, but that's up to you, you know. But, I, yeah, I support all that. And Irma would like to know, can we see this presentation again? Will it be recorded? I'll take that one. Yes, the webinar is being recorded. 
and all of the registrants will receive an automated email with a web link that will allow you to view the recorded presentation. Uh, is there any value in purchasing an annuity if my pension benefits and Social Security cover my living expenses? Well, I mean, no. Then you'd have your paychecks, but do you want to have do you want to have paychecks guaranteed? I do. I mean, I, some people don't. Some people are willing to, you know, skip vacations for three years if the market's down for three years. I'm not. I, I mean, I've I've saved enough now, so I I got enough to I can retire anytime I want. I just I just don't want to lose what I've already got. And so um, I'm way more into guarantees than than not into guarantees because uh, again, I, I've seen the numbers. You know, uh, a DIA will typically outperform a 60-40 portfolio over 30 years. So why do I want to even have any money in a 60-40 portfolio? I don't. So that's why I do it. I want guaranteed paychecks and playchecks because Tommy's going to do some playing. He's going to play some golf. He's going to play some tennis. He's going to travel. He's going to have fun because what good would it be if the guy who wrote the book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, doesn't retire and he's not happy. So I promise you that's not going to happen. So speaking of retiring happy and having some play checks, uh, Tom, you mentioned earlier uh, that uh, you, you need to go ahead and, and spend some of that money that, that you've worked hard to save. Uh, and uh, here's a question related to that. How much is a suitable percentage that should be left as liquid assets? Well, I think that depends on every person. Um, but I will tell you, most people have more liquidity than what they need. You know, uh, they, they, they might have $400,000 sitting liquid and, and you say, hey, um, I got a question for you. What's the biggest expense you've ever had in your entire life other than buying your house? What is it? Oh, we had to pay $5,000 for, you know, a new air conditioner. We had to put the roof on and it was, you know, $17,000. Okay, <laughs> why are you having 400,000 liquid? See, if you have enough insurance that covers your long-term care and covers all these scenarios, if you've done good with risk management and you've got income coming in, how much liquidity do you really need? Now, I can't tell you what that is. Everybody's different, but I'll tell you, a lot of people, they have way too much liquid. And just remember, liquidity costs money. Liquidity is not free because a money market fund right now is paying what, 1% or something? When you could have it in a, uh, you know, in, a, in some type of income annuity that has a payout rate of six or seven percent. I mean, what's the cost of having that money liquid? So I'm all for some liquidity. Everybody should have some liquidity, but it's up to every person to really decide how much they they need. But I, I think a lot of people have probably too much liquidity. If, if you know, if you got twenty million dollars, you might need a you know million or two liquid or three million liquid. I don't know, maybe. I, I'm going to leave the percentage off because it's really different for every person. I'll leave that up to you as the advisors to, to talk to them about. And we are up against the uh, 12 noon hour here on the East Coast. Uh, we've got a comment and uh, three questions. So we'll try to, we'll, we'll wrap it up here with this comment and three questions. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, for the comment, uh, life insurance for kids is so true. I met a man who lost his son uh, while the son was attending college uh, in his third year now, paying student debt as a reminder of his loss. How sad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then we have a question, uh, two Social Security questions, and I want to quickly add that as a follow-up to this webinar today, uh, in a way, we will have a Social Security Administration representative on a webinar in December. So these are, keep these Social Security questions coming and, and please be on our webinar in December where you can ask questions also. Uh, would taking a ex-spouse's Social Security impact an employee's medical benefits or have any other negative implications? I have a client who's been told by someone at the SSA that it would. Well, I... I don't know the answer to that because, you know, every every company's different. I mean, some company might have a clause that says if you're taking, you know, Social Security benefits, that that can impact your your medical. So I'm not aware of it, but I'm not aware that it's not true either. So I, I would defer that one till the next month. So you have your uh, Social Security person there. They may be able to lend a little more on that one. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, one more question on Social Security. Uh, I thought the taking of an ex-spouse of Social Security age 62 and then switched to years at a later date was taken away and the 2016 shows Social Security changes. Any yeah, comment on that? 
not 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 the ex spouse. That is true of your current spouse. You can't do, you know, the the restrict file a restricted application, but but you can do it when you're in, for an ex spouse. Okay. So and I mean, you can you can double check that with. I, I would I would always Google Mary Beth Franklin. She's the smartest person I know in Social Security. So if you Google Mary Beth Franklin, you know, divorced, uh, restricted application, it should pop up, and you should be able to have it in writing right there. Outstanding. And our last question, does Tom have any advice on specific books and materials to help with prospecting? Well, I do. On, on my website, I do have one called Targeted Tactics. Targeted Tactics. It's free. It's an ebook, um, and you could you could get that. Um, you know, uh, oh shoot, I'm just trying to think of his name. Um, the Game of Numbers. Um, Nick Murray. Nick Murray has has a great book out there on prospecting. Um, and then I would just, I think you could, you could, um, you know, Google life insurance prospecting, annuity prospecting, and I think some books would pop up. You can even go to Amazon in the book section and just type prospecting and see what pops up. Um, you know, I'm not prospecting much anymore, so I, I it's not top of my mind, but um, there are, there are resources out there. And uh, there are also, you know, people out there that can help you you know, get in front of more people. I know at an insurance soup, they've got that, the CAC thing that they've got. I know Jeremiah Desmarais, uh, he's got some stuff. And so there are people out there and tools out there that focus on that. Great. Well, we are just about out of time. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Tom presented his uh, Don't Worry, Retire Happy webinar uh, to NAFA members, and there was a clamoring for his new material, and uh, we're so happy that we are able to present this today. Tom, thank you so much for being with us for this NAFA webinar. Thank you. And uh, also want to thank all of our uh, webinar participants. Uh, it was recorded, and an email will be sent to you with the webinar recording. This concludes the webinar.